Well, welcome to part two of the uh, Mesa Boogie triple rectifier uh, rejuvenation or upgrade to get it where it should be or call it what you will. Refurb. Could call it any of them but you can see it's a bit of a job and there's a lot to do. Uh, well, what are we going to do this time? Well, first of all, I've taken all the tubes out of this amp from one of the conversion for the uh, mains 240 volts, which we did in the previous video. If you haven't seen that video, whip back down below and you can go and have a look at that first if you want. That's a bit of a, a job, but I keep it nice and short currently because I've done a, a Road King 2 historically and one or two other amps and they're all pretty similar to do. Uh, so if you want to learn a bit about putting a, a 240 volt power transformer in there, that's the video down there. However, this video is all about getting rid of these tubes for various reasons. You can see this one here. I'll take a look at it on screen now. Uh, they've snapped the end off, you know, the, the lug, and you could put that in wrong. Uh, but even worse than that, if I go and have a look at this, uh, if I go and have a look at this uh, 5U4GB at the end, well, in the middle of the end, these are rectifier tubes, and the centre snapped off that one. I can imagine what would happen if you plug this one, or indeed the other one in, on the wrong position. Yeah, it could be fun. It could go snap, crackle and pop, and you might think you're in November the 5th in England. So I set out and bought some new tubes. Oh my God, you don't understand how expensive they are. <laughs> well, if you're in England, they're expensive. They might be expensive in the USA or certainly will be in Australia. Or maybe even in Europe. They cost me, uh, for all these six power tubes and three of these uh, rectifier tubes, they cost about £360. That's about at least $450 for the set. So it's a lot of money. And certainly I could have gone and bought other brands. But on a Mesa Boogie often you wouldn't do that. Let me explain. You see Mesa Boogie in their wisdom for I think forever actually. <laughs> yeah probably forever. Uh, I've had what they set up as like a preset bias for the tubes. And this preset bias was fine as long as you got their tubes. And what they did was balance all their tubes to all work together without setting any bias because they already knew what the bias in the amp is set to, if you follow me. Simple enough. And you know what, that's really great as long as you're putting the Mesa tubes in there. You're never going to have a problem. If you look at the bottom of one of these, for example, this one says, uh, oh, I can't even read that one. This one says uh, number 10 AC and yellow. And this one says number 10 AC and yellow. And that one says number 5 AC and grey. So they're not really matched, but hopefully the ones I'm going to put in will be. The point is that I could have fitted other tubes. And some of the suppliers of the other tubes that are out there can actually match them up to just plonk straight in on a Mesa Boogie amp. That could save you a bit of money. Hmm. So why didn't I do it? Well, there is a very good reason. And the very good reason is that I'm putting this amplifier as near as I can get it with my colleague Phil back to how it was when it was made. Well, apart from the <laughs> power, power transformer. But yeah, so I could have gone and got those others, but I've had one or two bad experiences with some tubes. I never had any uh, Mesa Boogie bad experiences with tubes, funny enough, nor with uh, Tube Amp Doctor. They're another great company. I could have bought them, but by the time I've got them here, I... and bear in mind it's a Mesa Boogie and there's no uh, bias setting to adjust, well, not easily. You know, it made sense. And I, I wanted the Mesa Boogie logo on them, if you want the truth. <laughs> I know it's silly. But there's more to the story. The truth is, I could have bought other tubes. Because this amp has been modified 
and it's got a bias adjuster on it. Somebody's fitted that after he left the factory. You know, some guys talk about uh, these tubes. These are 6L6GCs, by the way. They talk about these tubes running hot or running cold, and mace are often set them cold, they say. That's what they say. And you know, when they set cold, you get a sort of, well, not as nice a sound as when they're hot. So, if you just bought the Mesa ones and just forded them in there, or forted them in, that's a good word, <laughs> then, well, you'd be running probably cold. Well, who knows? I could have tested it, but not on this amp. In any case, when we put these tubes in very presently, we're going to be able to set the bias to what we want, and we'll be able to see uh, basically how much those Mesa tubes are. Uh, I'll put my bias tester on there, which tests four at a time, uh, and that should be all interesting. Hmm. So here's the amp underneath, and uh, if you look just there, I'll probably put a picture or two on the screen so you can get in and see it better. Yeah, if you look just there, there's the little trim pot that's been fitted by some third party. It looks like he knows what he's doing as well. It's a, it's a pretty cool job that one. So I'm quite happy to leave that in there. And I suppose you would be too. Uh, makes sense to me. Uh, so we'll be doing that uh, pretty presently. Now I've got something else we're going to do too. Now I didn't show you, but those, uh, those clamps that hold the, uh, the tubes or the valves in place. Well, on this Mesa Boogie from 2004, maybe five or six, this is a revision D by the way, yeah, the clamps are not actually very good. Well, you can push them apart and they stay apart. And if you've looked at any amps of more recent times, like say Marshalls, anything like that, they're tending to use these other brands here. This, this one's called uh, Belton. B-E-L-T-O-N. Now, Belton ones, you put them on, you push your tube in, don't try and get it out. <laughs> well, you can get it out. I'm joking, of course, but it will stay in there for a very long time. These are all nice and chrome and shiny. They're all good. I don't know. They look like a, look like a really good idea to me. <laughs> so that's what we're going to fit. But I'm not going to fit those until we've fitted the tubes, done the biasing, done all that, got out of the way with all that rubbish. And then we'll fit these last because once I fit the tubes in, I should probably tear at the, uh, the etchings on the tubes, you know, the little marks that tell you how they matched and things like that. So we'll, we'll put them on last. That, that's, the, that's the thing to do. Oh, what a pile of tubes, or valves, as they say in England. Got some preamp tubes. I've only got four there, and I'm pretty sure there's five in there. But don't worry about that, I've got another one spare, which I already had. So these are, those are what they are. Leave them out of the way. Then we've got the 5U4GBs, the rectifier tubes. Oh, by the way, all these tubes came from Pro Audio Service Limited in the UK, and he's based in, where is he based? Leicester, or somewhere, Colville, Leicester. Yeah, which is in England, like I said. Uh, guy named Rob, uh, yeah, very helpful guy. He'll help you if you've got a Mesa, well, or any amp, actually. He'll help you. And uh, you can buy, you know, certain parts from him if you want, and things like that. Hopefully he'll sell them. Yeah, I'm sure he will. <laughs> but that's Rob. I uh, just thought I'd give him a mention, because he's very good with support, and he'll help you. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Okay, so the 5U4GBs, well, what do they expect to get? Well, 5U4GB marked up, as it should be, with a Mesa logo, and it looks really nice. Yeah, I can see them fitting in there in a wonderful way. Can you? Well, they'll even sound more wonderful. That's my guess. If you look at the ones that have come out, you know, personally, I think they've never been changed in the life of the, uh, the life of the amp. And partly, You've got to blame Mesa, haven't you, a little bit? 
because the price of those tubes it's not commensurate with doing any work on this is it you wouldn't want to actually touch anything for fear of the cost so they don't match up they there's nothing to match on them see this is the thing about Rob I didn't have to ask him to send me three sets that are all the same he could have sent me any they're all going and it still work but he sent me tested by AC tested by AC tested by AC matched by AC all three match group green on all three code 10 on all three and it's even been initialed on the box by AC on all three so I doubt you can really get much uh, nearer to a match than that well does it need to be well no it doesn't if it's good enough for these guys you mark my words it's good enough for you and me yeah let's have a look at one of them well here it is I mean there's nothing much to shout about really but I just wanted to give you a little view of what you get like I said it's a number 10 it's done by AC and it's a green match you can see them down the bottom it's got the usual uh, sort of Mesa logo on it 6L6 GC and these STR 440s now I think the others uh, that were originally in this are let me take a look at one mm. yeah an STR 430 but apparently those are not going to be available so what else is there to say about them well not a lot really uh, they probably made uh, by Tom Dick or Harry that would be some company that's well known but Mesa what they do really is uh, test them match them they guarantee them well not for that long I think it's 90 days on tubes which is not really very long but I guess if you blew one at 91 days or something they'd send you some <laughs> if you get the idea uh, hand tested wheedled out so the chances of these failing when you plug them in probably isn't uh, very high like I said they are expensive and you could buy equivalents from other companies like Tube Amp Doctor some guys I've uh, bought from for years but I wanted on this one to fit the Mesa stuff so there you go that's a quick rundown of the tube what else does it say who knows let's have a look yeah it's got a load of gibberish on the back meet robo tube and all that bias and all it, it explains it all to you and to be honest I'm not really interested in marketing and here we are back I've got my uh, favorite uh, engineer yeah <laughs> Phil they call him other things too but plenty that's of other things <laughs> yeah yeah well anyway what we've been doing while we've been away is we took a look at the amp as it was set up uh, with the old tubes in now we're going to do a quick test and we used a bias master yeah. And Philly has got the uh, the answers. Uh, so tube set one. Yeah, tube set one. Yeah, we set up. Yeah, we set up seven point five, seven point eight, and nine point four. We're way off where we should be on these. Way way. Yeah, off. that's actually the bias. <laughs> I think it should be between. Uh, it was twenty to forty. Twenty to forty on these. Yeah. So uh, not very good. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go and take these things away, have a bit of a quick closer look and I'll be back in a moment and then we can see where we're going with this actually we just pulled the main power tubes out and what we're going to do is swap over the preamp tubes because we've got a set down here to do that and then we'll come back and uh, take another look at the power side tell them <laughs> right then right with uh, the new tubes in uh, we've just tested and we're now we're sitting 12.5 12.5 and then the other two are sitting at 12.9 12.9 so yeah and that's on the center four because yeah. we've only got enough sockets for the center four well, the center four and the outer two are probably all the same the accuracy on the measurements uh, from Mesa is well great bear in mind the old tubes had this variance the new tubes are well as near as damn it all we've got to do is adjust up the uh, basically the bias because yeah. on this one there is a bias adjuster that's been fitted and what we're going to do is we're going to do that now and uh, yeah we'll be back hold on obviously if you've got an ordinary Mesa amp there's nothing to do you plug them in and you're running 
It's that simple. Well, we're back, and uh, we've done a quite a number of things uh, to the amp, haven't we? Yeah, haven't we just? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all the preamp tubes were changed. All the power amp tubes and the rectifier tubes have been changed. And when we came to the uh, oh, and also the little holders that hold the uh, these little things that hold the tubes in place have all been changed out for nice shiny ones. I thought it was worth doing you. Yeah, yeah. It just looks better. <laughs> now one of the things about this uh, modification that was done on this uh, for the uh, for the bias, we could only get it fully turned up to about 30. Yeah. Actually 29.7. But across the tubes, the, uh, the four centre ones, which is the ones we tested really, 29.7, 29.5, 29.6 and 29.7. So I would say that that's a pretty good setup. Uh, so if you think about it being uh, in this little handbook between 20 and 40, yeah, I think 30 is pretty good. <laughs> I don't, what do you think? Oh God, yeah, we've yeah. hit that mid spot perfectly, man. Yeah. absolutely perfect. And it, and it actually does work, believe it or not, uh, even with me and Phil <laughs> working on this, uh, it does actually work. So if we turn it on, you might be able to hear it. He's just coming through some headphones over there through a load. <laughs> so, so we know it works before we do anything else, which is probably a good idea. <laughs> if you get to this point yourself and uh, nothing's coming out, ask yourself why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, get a guy in like him uh, and he'll figure it out for you. They're not cheap, them things aren't. I know he looks cheap. <laughs> I've always looked cheap, but hey. Looks can be deceiving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, look at me. <laughs> I am cheap, right? <laughs> okay, well, to sum up, Phil will tell you what he's done. Well, we've changed the power supply, uh, we've done the preamp tubes, we've done the rectifier tubes, and we've done the power tubes as well. Okay, uh, and what else have we done on this as well, Tony? Uh, we've also, uh, when we use these preamp tubes, we fitted a one of the special ones that's got a sort of rubberized thing around it. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've also, uh, for the pie tube, we've got a balanced yeah. match tube in that position. And I think apart from that up to now, oh yeah, we did the the crocodile oh, clamps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course we did. Aesthetics, aesthetics. Yeah. Uh, so we've got them done. So it's looking pretty much where we really want it to be right yeah. now. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Okay, uh, we've also looked at all the, all the capacitors inside as well, and to be perfectly honest, they were all looking pretty damn good, so we've left those alone, you know, it wasn't worth going and actually changing and no, messing around with no. them, so yeah, we've no. left those as they were. So it's all, uh, it's all honky-dory. That's the word, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's one other thing, uh, this little red light here. I know it looks red, it's because it's probably a bit bright, but uh, the fact is it should have been purple. <laughs> Yeah, I've got the original one here somewhere. I just screwed that off and screwed the other one in, which was fun. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Was there anything else we did that? Yeah, there was one last thing. Uh, when we change this over here as well, you've really got to watch yourself because the connectors on this, uh, if you're not really careful, it's going to short out on your power supply. So just right. make sure that you're yeah, keeping right. everything nicely spread apart on that. So that was because we used a new power supply? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's the a different size yeah. than the original one. Yeah, That's just, the thing. it wasn't by much though, was no, it? No, no. Just, yeah. But just enough to cause you a problem. Yeah. And it's still running. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Uh, there was one other thing as well. Uh, we, uh, we were measuring on spongy and bold as well on the All back. Right. And then uh, as we were sitting at spongy, it was matching the input. So we were sitting at about 240, yeah. about that. Uh, when we switched this over to bold, it was pushing it up to just below 280. So really, if you're going to be using it, you want to be keeping it in spongy. You want to be matching, really, uh, the power yeah. power input which you put in there, as opposed yeah. to putting it over to bolt. Well, you can hear the difference when you crank it up to that uh, that bolt, mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot of people just use it flat out on bolt. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there is a moral in that story. And uh, if you go and check Guitarologist's uh, website, he, he did a, I think he was on a dual rectifier, and he was rambling on about something about that as well. Yeah. And I, I, me and Phil here just wanted to go and check that, so we did. Yeah. Hmm. All interesting. Okay, well that's it for now. Uh, that's the next section of this 
Mesa Boogie, triple rectifier, solo head, uh, rejuvenation to bring it more in line with what you'd expect to see a really good one as. And uh, I don't think they make these as well as uh, this anymore. The new ones got IRs and all sorts of, well, I won't, well, I won't say what I meant. <laughs> Well, it, it's got think. all that other stuff in that takes it away from being, you know, bona fide a tuna tube amp. And uh, personally, that's one of the reasons I bought this one because this is a, it's a real deal. It's like Phil, he's the real deal, he is. <laughs> wow, sort of. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Yeah, I, I, I do know. <laughs> I, I do know he's very good with cereal ports. It's one of his <laughs> specialities. Uh, in history, and uh, he's been good at that for a long time. Right, it's about yeah. 15 years now, that one, yeah. Yeah, 15 <laughs> years, yeah. So, uh, without further ado, as they always say at the beginning or the end, this is the end. Uh, don't forget to go to www.tonymackenzie.com where there's loads of reviews that aren't on YouTube. It's a bit old at the minute, but I'll eventually get up to date with it or it'll go dark for me. It'll be one or the other. He won't do it. So that's, that's that. And, uh, yeah, how would I score the tubes? Listen, I'll tell you something. With a nice balance like that, I'd score them tubes at about nine. Yeah. Well, why not ten? Well, because of the price. The price is... Well, it's not extortion. But it does come from Chicago, probably. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, well, you've got to pay what you pay. It's the same with the Transformer. The little uh, Balton uh, crocodile things were cheap. I think they were just a few quid from tubeamptdoctor.com. And that's it. Yeah, the next time we'll be looking more at the, uh, the aesthetics of the amp. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to recover the case, I don't think. But I just want to glam it up a bit, you know. Yeah? Yeah. What do you yeah. think? Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like wearing golden earrings or something. You know, you could... Well, you'll find out. Next, uh, The next uh, portion is coming up sometime over Christmas, as this one has. And I'll see you soon. And it's goodbye from me, and it's... Yeah, it, uh, it's a definite goodbye from him. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, here we are, rocking and rolling. Like I said, it works. I've got a guitar sitting on a chair over there. I won't be playing that much, but uh, I've got a speaker down here, which is a uh, enough to give it a load. And I've got the amp turned on, and it's on channel three, with the uh, with the master turned off. Yeah, quiet. But it does get loud because it's cranked. <laughs> so if we just turn the master up, you can hear it there. Don't worry about the horn. It's because it's cranked on the, uh, the rest of it. And it can get very loud. But if I play... Let's turn that back off. <laughs> and here it is cranked. And you can trust me, that is very loud. <laughs> and the other channels work too. Well, they will in a minute. Channel 2, which is also cracked. <laughs> 4. Channel 1. Which is also cranked. Yeah, they're all, that's why you can hear the hums because they're flat out. This thing's been running for some hours actually, just so we can make sure it's safe. So I'll leave it running in the background, but as you can see, it's pretty stonking this one and uh, it's a great arm. Had a few funnies on it, which I might discuss in the next video uh, or not. We shall see. And uh, we'll go from there. Now get out of here.